Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, as you can probably see, we're doing something a bit different. We, this, this is not, this is not Five Nights at Freddy's anymore. We are not in Kansas anymore. Photo. So, this is Ancient Dungeon VR. A kind of, like, half hack and slashy, roguelike game set in VR, of course. I'm looking around with my actual head. Usually this game has snap turning, where I, I use my joystick to kind of like turn 45 degrees instantly, but that I felt like that would just be too nauseating for, for the recording. So, I'm just going to have to spin around in circles in my actual location. Hopefully, uh, the building that I'm in, the, the little room that I'm in, is big enough that I won't hit anything while spinning around and swinging my arms wildly, uh, swinging my sword at enemies, because unlike Five Nights at Freddy's VR, I can fight back in this game. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, this is not, this is not a new game to me, by the way. I have almost 100%ed this game. The, those are all of my completed tasks, and... Those are my two uncompleted tasks. The only two things that I haven't done is there's one, one item that I haven't found. And I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I think it's called like the stone arrowhead or something. And then there's one challenge run. These are like challenge runs, like they might have more enemies or larger rooms or something like that. And I haven't done one of them, which is probably the hardest, where it basically just gives you literally nothing. You don't get any items, you don't get any upgrades, you get you don't get any coins, you don't get any keys, you get nothing. And you have to beat the entire game like that, which is, as you might imagine, pretty hard. So uh I'm I'm still I'm still used to having to spin around by actually using my feet. Um if you if you hear a loud smack and then a fuck my hand, ow god! Uh, <laughs> Followed by me dying in game, uh, you, you probably know why, as I'm in a pretty enclosed space. So yeah, there's there's two different weapon choices to choose from: sword and knife, crossbow and dagger. I personally like the crossbow and dagger more. It's just the one that I'm used to. I'll probably do the sword and the knife at least once to show it off, but we're gonna go for crossbow and dagger. There's not really anything that we need to unlock. So we might as we might as well go hard difficulty. Bosses are harder. Bosses deal double damage. More aberrant enemies spawn. More enemies spawn. Food and money is more scarce. All that good stuff. So here we are on the first floor of the game. Uh, by the way, this game is like a randomly generated game, so it's kind of different each time. You got bookshelves which you can destroy. They don't really do much, although sometimes there's a a secret, a secret hidden passageway behind them. By the way, I can summon my dagger to my hand. Boxes. Boxes are slightly better. So are pot, because they, they actually have a small chance of containing coins or keys, which you can see right here. Same thing with my health and my two inventory slots. I have one on each hand. Those are those little like, kind of grayed out squares. And then here's my mini-map. That little blue triangle is me, and I can see myself going around. This is my crossbow. It explodes. And the bolt automatically returns. Uh, it's a lot faster if the bolt is right next to you, rather than across the room from you. So it kind of... It kind of forces you to get up and close to your enemies. And, oh, it's one of the dashy boys. So these guys will kind of sprint towards you, and you need to knock them back with your melee weapon to keep them from dealing damage to you. I'm probably not going to try try to over-explain things, because I, I know that I do that in my videos a lot. I'll just explain every say. Oh, that's a, a hidden thing in the ceiling. There's an item. Merchants provide health when you buy an item. Eh, that's pretty nice. Merchants, you can bring your coins to them and you can buy items. You can also cut these vines and the, the grass, but they, they do literally nothing. It's just, it's just kind of fun. Right. 
I, I feel the need to explain what every single enemy does, but I, I really don't think I need to. By the way, these take keys, so I can't go into those rooms yet. But I think I think it's pretty easy to just look at what's happening and be able to tell what they do. Like, these guys, they fly towards you. I mean, you can very clearly see that. Oh, that guy's not having a good day. Um, I guess maybe I should take trigger warning. I don't know. I don't, I don't think this is going to trigger anyone. So that right there, I, I didn't read it out loud. Significantly increases evasion. Evasion, probably my favorite stat in this game. It's just whenever you get hit, there's a percentage chance that you didn't actually get hit and you don't take any damage, which is pretty sweet, especially when that gets up to like 50 or 70%. It's a, it's definitely a rare stat, but it's it's very welcome. If if I can get an evasion upgrade, I will definitely take that any day. I'm going to go back here since I have a coin now. Um, you can see what's past this one. That's just some chest. I don't think that's really going to be all that great, but I'll use my key to get in here. Now this, this is a uh a, like, challenge chest. When you open it... Ooh, a potato. That's actually kind of nice. It'll spawn some enemies for you to fight. And then... Once you, uh, eat them all, it'll give you an item. In this case is porcupine quills. Ranged attacks also produce a burst of quills. So that just looks like that. Uh, it's not the greatest item. It works better with the sword and knife combo than than the crossbow and dagger, which we currently have, but I'm not going to say no to. I mean, it, it has no downsides, and we wouldn't gain anything from not picking it up, so... Welcome welcome to the team, Porcupine Quills. This is my little hut where I can see all my stuff. Ooh, is that another evasion upgrade I spy? Usually, usually you don't get these too frequently. Literally the two the two items that just directly increase evasion. Thank you very much. Uh, so significantly increases increases evasion, slightly increases evasion. Now we're at twenty five percent. So basically, one out of four times that I get hit, it'll just ignore that damage ever happened. And by the way, uh, potato. Food items are very, very good in this game, especially since we're playing on hard mode right now, where they're more scarce. Uh, we only have three hearts of health. Now, each each of those hearts are technically like two hearts, because each of them... Oh, yeah, that's that's what we call a point of no return. I, You can tell because of that divot on the ceiling. There's another one over there, but I took this one instead of that one. Each of the floors, there's... There's, uh, four main floors of this game, and they're each kind of divided into two by points of no return like that. And, uh, you kind of want to explore the entire first half of the floor before you move on to the second half, past the, uh, the point of no return. That's not what they're technically called, I just, I just like to call them, I don't think they have really a name. He's that there. A lot more of them than I thought there were. Uh, this is probably our shop, yeah. Ooh, ooh. That would be nice, but I definitely don't think we have enough money for it. Area maps are fully revealed. That means that this mini-map will just have everything already revealed for us. Once charged, you, you... Nah. Okay, so... Basically, if we somehow get 60 coins, we're going to go for Bat Ear. Otherwise, we'll take... I'm not going to say no to Beloved Keepsake. Basically, what that does is it gives us another Heart of Health. But once we lose it, we can't, like, re-heal it. So it's kind of like a temporary health up. By the way, health ups in this game are very, very rare. Unlike, unlike a roguelike like Isaac, where... You can kind of you can kind of spend your hit points liberally. By the way, you, if you see the texture change on that wall, that's a secret 
area that you can bust into. Orbs. Yeah, I didn't I didn't explain these. Orbs, they're just single-use potions. I don't like them. I don't like them. I, I don't use them. I don't like them. Uh, and you can't change my mind. I think they are not useful at all, except for two of them. But I guess I'll get into that when I find them. Because those are a lot less temporary. But I just... I, oh, this is a dead end. I just don't see the point in getting... Like a temporary time-based damage up. I can I can just do time anyway. I mean I can I can just do damage anyway. It's not that's not anything special. By the way, that's the uh, the door to the first boss, which I'm going to not go into yet because I want to buy myself beloved keepsake for 15 coins. Is there anything else good? Ooh, that would. That would be nice, but once again, too expensive. We can't afford it yet. We are extremely poor on this first floor. But anyway, moving on to the first boss. The boss fights in this game are fun. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot that down first, because... Uh, oh, that was a little bit of a... Alright, so... We got this guy as our first boss. He's, uh... Ow. He's not deal damage to us that early, but, uh, he kind of, he kind of just swings wildly, and he's not, he's not that hard, usually I don't take damage on him, but I did that, that one time, um, he kind of forces you to use your ranged weapon, which I kind of like, I don't know, we, we are the, uh, what's this, oh, no, I'm not gonna do that, basically what that does is you can cause an explosion for a few coins, I, I, disagree with that. Um, I, I will not take that. Almost ever. Because it is, it is not, it's not for me. It's not for me. I would prefer to have coins than temporary damage any day. Any day. Any day of the week. Ow! Oh, that, there was an exploding wall mushroom and I, uh, I did not see it. Remember that dashy guy from earlier? These, these are the dashy guy, but on steroids. Not only do they dash, they also leave a poisonous trail of gas behind them when they dash, and they explode on death. Like so. Ow! That was the uh, the loud crash followed by an ow that I was talking about earlier. Uh, because, <laughs> because of me trying to use this huge room, like, I mean, this tiny room, like, like it's a, a big VR room. Yeah, I'm, uh, definitely nerfed by my play space a bit. I might, I might try, uh, recording with the snap turn and see if it looks bad or not, but at the moment, I just want to be safe and go ahead and assume that it's not going to look good. By the way, here's a little, oh, exploding wall mushroom. Don't want to, don't want to be there when that happens. By the way, a little, a little tip, you can just kind of nudge your way into rooms slightly and then just look on your mini map and as soon as you enter it, even, even just a tiny, even just a tiny little bit, you'll be able to see the entire room's size and layout. Okay. That item over there. Actually, I know most of these items, but some of them, some of them I forget, and then it's exciting. When health is low, weapon damage is significantly increased. Hello, grub. He's so cute. Give him, give him a little pet on the head, and I killed him. Okay, well, that's that. That happened just now. I'm traumatized. I was just, I was just trying to give him a pat on the head. Uh, th that one I was trying to do. I'm, uh, I'm going through some stuff right now. Ladder you can grab onto and climb. You can also just abuse the physics engine by just yeeting yourself in random directions. I can just grab this once and then... Huah! Which I, I kind of love. I don't want them to fix that. I don't know if they can fix that, honestly. But 
even if they could, I don't want them to, because that, it's just, it's just fun. Oh, indeed. It seems we missed a room back here. If you see, the, uh, the whole thing has, like, a, a black outline, and where it doesn't have that outline, you know that there's a room you haven't visit, visited. Here's, there was nothing really of value in this room, but there, there still might be. I can still have hope. Just some exploding wall mushrooms, and, whoa, a lot of exploding wall mushrooms. And a chest over there. These are the same as the, uh, as the ladder and the fact that you can grab onto them and pull yourself along. Uh, there's a key chest, but we are, we are starved for keys this run. I don't think we've come across, like, a single key this entire, well, wait, well, you no, know, we, we, we got that one, but we are definitely low on keys this run. I'm probably going to end the recording at the end of this floor, the second floor, because honestly, it, <laughs> I, I, this is, this is the fourth time I've tried to record this game, okay? Each time, each time, each and every time before this, it, I've lost all of the footage, because, <laughs> because I got to like the final boss or whatever, and then my, my recording session timed out, and... And I just, I just lost. I, I need to, I need to explain things more. This, gain 30 coins after completing an area, it's pretty nice. It, it basically gives you more of that spending power in shops that we lack at the first floor. Oh. And it's a pretty good item to get in early game. Just get it in late game when, when you're like right about to fight the other boss or whatever. It's a- it's a lot less useful. But since we're still pretty early game, overall that would be one, two, three. Excuse me, I'm doing math. One, two, yeah. Three, so that would be 90 to 90 coins in total that it'll give us. Significantly. Okay, so that- we're not actually gonna take that. That's the first- that's the first item this game that we're not gonna take. Um, there are three totem items in this game. Uh, I can never remember which is which, but the gaping totem is the one that I don't like. Um, and I'll explain that real quick. Uh, this one, it significantly increases weapon damage, so crossbow damage and dagger damage, but each strike costs the coin. I don't like that, uh, especially since the weapon damage increase is not that great where it's really worth it to me. The other two are just a one-time thing. The one that I especially like, it removes all of your keys and coins, but it increases your damage permanently based on how many keys and coins it removed. So basically, it's just a, a one-time loss for permanent gain. This is a one-time gain for permanent loss. Which, which is, it's okay if I'm about to fight the final boss, because then I don't really have much of a need for coins. But especially this early in the game, that, that will just ruin our opportunity to spend money in shops for the rest of the run. Which is not fun. That's just a sentient battle axe. Is this our shop? Yes, it is. Okay, what do we got here? Bat ear? Okay, so now we might have enough to afford bat ear. If we get around 10 coins, we might be able to do that, which would be nice. I would like that. I would enjoy that. Bat ear, it's not, it's not game breaking, but it's definitely convenient. I like having that here, especially since it tells you, uh, even where secret rooms are. Oh, we actually have enough to afford it already. It's definitely not, I don't think it should be sold as a 60 coin item in the shop, 
but I I think I don't I don't I don't know if it's worth sixty coins, but there's nothing there's nothing else here that that's worth how many coins. Like for instance, this one when hit summon a wisp. I don't plan on getting hit very often, and also wisps aren't even that powerful. They're just they just deal a bit of damage and then they're gone forever. And that's it. Hi, thank you. Okay, so if you look if you look at this map mini map, so now it shows us rooms that we haven't even been to, including our secret room for this floor, which is right here. And you can see that that's in uh, purple. Choices between range strikes produce a poisonous cloud, but projectiles are slower. Eh. Weapon damage against aberrant enemies and eh, neither of these are really good at least this one doesn't have any downside so i'll take that one by the way the aberrant enemies those are the ones that are like the the like more powerful versions like if you saw earlier ooh, ooh, this is this is an item that i'll take lost lodestone either melee or range damage slightly increases after completing an area so every single time that we can an area, it'll give us a slight damage up, which is great, especially in early game like this, and especially if we're going for new game bosses, which I think I am. Yeah. Because it'll it'll just over time give us more and more and more damage as we continue further into the game. Which is especially nice because the enemies start having more and more health, which kind of makes for that uh, not getting damage upgrades. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of a prerequisite to get damage upgrades. Around, around floor 3 or 4, it stopped being, oh, it's nice to have a damage upgrade and more yeah, if you don't if you don't have enough upgrades, you're gonna just die. <laughs> you're just gonna you're you're not you're not gonna have a fun time. Here is our second boss. Oh, he's gonna dash at us, and he's gonna dash at us again. Wow, this guy's usually a jumpy guy, like right now, but apparently this time he just really wanted to show y'all the rare dash attack, which seems like his common attack <laughs> at this point. Three dash attack in one. In one boss fight. That is honestly a little terrifying. But anyway, that's that's about where I'm gonna have to end this episode. I because I am so scared of losing the footage again. That I'm gonna have to uh right here. Next time you will see the Forgotten Library and eventually the final boss of the game um yeah that's it this is probably gonna end up being really short but i don't care because i do not want to lose the footage again please please tell me that you are watching this and that this worked <laughs>